Morning all, test ride time again, yes, this is a Wednesday morning, it's a live stream night tonight, and we're riding this for the customer, now this is the WK GT Max, and believe it or not, this is a 50cc bike, doesn't look it, looks more like a 125, it's bigger, it's bolder, and it's packed with LEDs all the way round, so projector style headlight, big LED bars to the front you're not going to go unnoticed on there disc brake to the front now what we got on the side let's have a look should you need a passenger big passenger foot well there we go look at that somewhere to put your passenger feet on the 50 uh, not that I would say two up on a 50 because you're not going to go very fast you're going to get 30 or probably 25 but check that out down the back end drum brake to the rear nice little exhaust cover big wide seat on this and a digital display this is a bit of kit i tell you so loads of 50cc's out at the moment Lexmoto Echo, the GT Max, the AJS Firefox but this WK GT Max is to die for absolutely love these and the Echo is my favourite bike but this one is my top favourite I actually prefer this over the Echo because I can actually straight leg and flat foot the bike it's a lot higher in the seat and as you can tell we're under RB Bridge it's school run and work run morning so we've got all the cars going past at the moment but loads and loads of foot space on this two little buckets to put your stuff in one here, one here and check this out USB plug to the left and your obligatory bag clip and the cyclists are out as well now on your LED display look at this fuel tank, rev counter, speedo, elapsed mileage and a battery charge light tells you 12 volts when you start the bike and it's charging around about 14.2, 14.4 which is where it should charge for all batteries on the controls, kill button and your start button horn, indicators, main beam, dip beam, that is it all your telltales come up in the window there very easy to see, nice and bright, main beam, dip beam, and the other one is your engine management light. Front brake, rear brake, big wide mirrors. Now look, look at this. Look at the view that I have. I've got literally an eighth of my shoulder in that mirror. So when you set the mirrors up, hold them, give them a little wiggle, set it off to the side. There we go, look at that. Loads and loads of near side and off side mirror. So, you can keep an eye on the traffic, what is coming in from behind now. I already know nothing's coming in from behind, but we always shoulder check twice. Why? In case something fast is coming around that corner. Right, let's get off, let's wind it up to speed and see how quick we can get to 28 to 30 mile an hour. So, round about 10 seconds, as it is with all of the 50 cc's, 27, 28 are we going to get any faster 29 so yeah we're about 28 29 and then you can hit that restrictor you can hear it just holding the bike so they're all set up on the ecu and unfortunately it ain't going to go any faster now new tires wet road take it easy through the corners rb but being a lot higher it's a lot more stable it's got some big decent tyres on it and it handles exceptionally well now being a lot higher up I have loads and loads of knee room I've got loads of leg down there so I'm 5'10 32 inch long legs yes I have very long legs which makes it easier for me on a bigger bike but if you're a shorter rider you're going to have even more foot room over the speed bumps we go and a cyclist totally oblivious he's gone over the top and these lights hold for absolutely ages because of that fact for the cyclists what are we going to be like climbing the hill from start 1.6 miles on the clock and we will wait for the lights to go to green and see what she's like climbing from a start now brand new bike you've got to let the engines wear in on these so give them a little bit of time to warm up a couple of minutes in the morning just to warm the engine up but on a brand new engine it takes its time you're going to need at least 50 miles for the engine to loosen up 
and believe me they do get a little bit faster i took a gt max out recently and managed to get 32 33 which is going to probably be 30 mile an hour because the speedos are always set 10 percent more to allow for uh, distance so if you get a gps on it someone done a gps he said oh we said mine said 32 and i'm doing 28 yeah because the speedos are set slightly more right let's wind her up and see if she'll climb a hill from start it does and it's picking up speed look at that loads and loads of seat room nice and comfortable and let's get the visor down again speed bump let's see what she's like and i would say the suspension on this is mid to firm which is what you should be you don't want it all soft and spongy and springing around all over the place now i'm going to let the car through there is room to filter but i don't want to be freaking car drivers out at this time of the morning and we're away car behind me can wait because it is a 30 mile an hour road but wax up to speed very very quickly now what you will find is when you back off the throttle you do get your engine braking and then it gets to about 10 mile an hour and the variator lets loose and you start to free wheel which is great so you get a little bit of engine braking there as well chucking it over all these bumps and you can see it handles very well over all the bumps and the potholes we are going to head around town and we're going to get some town mileage up it's obviously 30 mile an hour roads And while we're doing that, I can waffle on about what is coming up over Christmas. We're going straight over. You can wait, Mr. Car Driver. Thank you very much. Watching all them side turnings. Now, we talk about uh, the Sevens, and I was explaining this to a customer yesterday that is buying one of our Lexmoto Echoes. She's doing a CBT today, so good luck. But... The sevens, and um, we talk about these all the time, doing my sevens, doing my sevens. So, the sevens are vanishing point. I am looking as far down the road as I can see, so I'm basically looking right down to that white house, one and two, left and right. Three and four is going to be in front of the car, so just in front of this Mercedes, I am looking. Five, left mirror, six, gauges, seven, right mirror done that have a little pause and then do it all over again one two three four five six seven which is why you see my head on all of my test rides my head is constantly moving and shoulder checking because i am watching every single junction junction to the right is there a car there on a roundabout no you can go Now everyone said to me oh yes but you pull up at junctions and there's absolutely nothing there yes there is i know but I still stop and look just in case something is going to scoot out of that junction the last thing you want is a car driver not to see you the car driver pulls out and you're hacking across a junction and oh dear you have side boned the car or t-boned the car so that is the last thing you want to do on a bike t-bone a car keep an eye on all the junctions watch those mirrors and keep an eye out for the idiot car drivers. Right, 27 mile an hour, and I'm not even at full throttle, I'm just gently easing the power on this bike. So there is plenty of power on these little GT Maxis, and it's very stable at low speed. Now you see what I mean? Didn't even see me, so look through the junction. I've got an indicator on, he didn't even see me. Another one, bell end of the week, car reversing in, the other cars keep an eye on the mirror, is there anything coming in behind me that hasn't seen me? So, on a motorcycle or a scooter, you are constantly aware of what is going on around you. So just keep an eye on things. And obviously with speed bumps, and you can't do it on this one, but you can sometimes filter around speed bumps watch the zebra crossing let the people across make sure they're clear before you accelerate there we go another one watch that car he's pulled out as well totally oblivious oh it's only a ped he can wait yeah there we go car parked on the curb watch the mirror nothing behind me nothing trying to come round me and the best thing is little 50 i can go into position one scoot round that speed bump 
watch that car, watch the wheels, make sure they have stopped before you go past. And the easiest way to see if a car is moving, don't look at the car itself, look at the wheel rims. Because you will notice that the wheel is turning. Look through the junction. So that is what you should be doing constantly. Zebra crossing. Be hazard, bit of what they call hazard perception. Zebra crossing. Has it got peds on it? On the speed bump. Watching the cyclist. Is he going to duck out onto the road? So there are loads of things that you are constantly doing when you're riding a motorcycle. Now, preempt my corner car behind me right hand turn boom 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 shoulder check yes move to my position check he's not going to try and come up the inside of me now I tend to use a little bit of back brake to drift in the corners shouldn't be doing that should not be using your brakes but I do a thing called trail braking where I tend to drag the back end and it is a thing you learn if you want to learn about trail braking go on YouTube watch a load of videos it's a track habit and it does get you through the corners a little bit quicker but obviously there's a very thin line between you over braking and losing either a front or rear end so do not trail brake unless you know exactly what you're doing so it's a couple of helpful tips looking through the corner and the other thing is that where do you position yourself going through corners while well, I will show you when we go around town so we're going right here we are going to stay in the outside lane because I am going to be turning right in a minute last thing you want to be doing is going to that left hand lane separate crossing it's got lights on it it's controlled this is a 30 mile an hour road watching that mini is he going to be a bell and cut across in front of me so I'm constantly watching to see if that car is moving covering my brake Mirror check, shoulder check. Adjust my speed so that I come down to the car in front and pop an indicator on. Into the roundabout we go. Maintaining my position. Watching across to that left hand lane, have they seen me? Left hand indicator, final shoulder check. Check the other side. So you're constantly shoulder checking, looking around, making sure everything is good. Speed camera coming up, I know, so that means I can do 30 through the camera. I ain't going to set any lights off today. 29 mile an hour, 30. And through the camera we go. So, car turning, keep an eye on the car. Position myself to the offside, <coughs> round the car. Dominate the lane, make them wait. Now, we're going to go over, we're going to go a reverse of that ride circuit, so we're going to go straight over, right hand lane, car's coming up to the inside, no indicator. Watching that car, or watching that van, round the roundabout, not across the middle of it. Now, right hand bend. So on a right hand bend, you're gonna be position one, looking through the corner. Gives you the furthest view to look through the corner. Position one for a left hand corner. Gives you more of the view of the road and you don't wanna be out in the middle because cars could overcut the corner. Dominate in position two because it's 30 mile an hour road. looking through that junction car see what I mean hazard perception guys checking all the lanes checking all the cars on the left here are not started they've not got the lights on and they're not going to be pulling out without looking so it's just a shed load of hazard perception now left hand bend you're going to be out to the right looking through the corner there is a hazard there is a lorry and there is also a van looking through that corner but you're on a left hand bend you're going to be out in position free looking through that corner again so it just gives you the furthest view through the corner if you're tucked right in you're not going to see round that corner coming up to junctions now i've got cars both sides middle of the road and you're going to be checking like now see my side of the road because there's cars there so 
it is a little bit of a hazard perception trying to look through roads and keep an eye on corners so we're going to go back the way we came back around the ride route and back to the garage now this one is a tight corner there's a car parked there is anybody going to turn right on me looking through the corner second look there we go there's a car appearing always do a second glance when you're pulling out into junctions if someone bibs you from behind just ignore them don't be uh, into gesturing and he's on my side of the road i have right of way yes you can wait make the car drivers wait especially taxi drivers they don't give a rats up to the junction again van is turning into my lane so i'm going to be back in position one looking through the corner good to go i know the van's turning across me so he's going to be blocking traffic go right we've done all that so now you know uh, obviously a little bit of uh, easy riding tips there for you car wheels see the wheels turn he noticed me right at the last minute and car drivers will not see a bike because you take up such a thin profile you've only got one headlight and a couple of leds but watch those junctions right wednesday night is live stream night hopefully i'll get this video up by tonight but if you don't go back and watch it on the rerun the peaky biker we've got some really good people in tonight so we've got exeter rider coming in and i can't remember all the others but there's loads of really good channels that are coming on and one of the big channels uh, this guy is an, a guru absolute guru on how to record your ride and i always say to people if you are riding a motorcycle get a cheap camera get a dash cam get a camera i'm running two now i've got the gopro which is on a chin mount and that is sitting just here right in front of me on my chin so that gives you a forward facing view of absolutely everything on the side of the crash helmet my right hand side i have my drift camera which is constantly running that is my backup camera should the gopro fail never does but it records my ride as well so my drift is just basically there for extra security now normally you can stick one on the mirror stick one on your chest you can put them you'll put your cameras everywhere you don't need to go and buy a gopro there are those cheap cameras that you can buy off of ebay called action sports cams and i think they're about 25 quid they do an adequate job they're going to record in 1080p which is adequate if you just want to record your ride it's no good for motor vlogging because quality is crap but it will record your ride should you have an accident and believe me accident footage on the camera tends to obviously protect you if the car driver is in the wrong and it also a godsend if you happen to have a youtube channel because you can upload that and probably get loads of money from that one video nice steady distance position one reason being i can watch the cars behind i have an escape route to the left down the curb should i need to get out of the way so wednesday night live stream really good tv he will tell you all about how to record and how to get good footage and how to get good audio i have suffered with terrible audio on my cameras for absolutely ages and it was just due to the fact that the wind whacks up underneath the bottom of my crash helmet and the microphone because it is so sensitive tends to pick it up god look at the traffic this morning keep the visor up for a minute so i used to suffer from a lot of wind noise mrs b or mrs bomb went out and she has got me a proper motorcycle neck warmer that actually slides up under the bottom of my crash helmet and stops all the wind noise and it was around about i think about 12 14 quid look at that scoot the junction couldn't be bothered to wait but he knows there's nothing coming because he's on a red light across there on the zebra right let's get back to the garage make remember to cancel that indicator rb ricky mistake uh 5.2 miles on the bike so half the ride test mileage done but live stream wednesday night if you haven't had a chance to watch it go back watch it on the rerun it is going to be really good it's got six really good channels on including me so 
honour to be actually invited on to the Peaky Bikers live stream and as you know me and Brian tend to live stream together so he, I'm on his on a Wednesday, he's on mine on a Friday, he's not on this Friday because he has another function to do and obviously family come first yes I totally understand but we have a special guest and I'm not going to tell you who that special guest is because I haven't seen him in ages but they are coming on my live stream because he's found the time so that's going to be a really good one we're on for an hour on Friday because obviously it's pre-Christmas and it is my last day at the garage on Saturday for a few days so I need to get up for an early start so we're only on for an hour on Friday Saturday though is half day at the garage we're off down the pub in the afternoon yay and Sunday is obviously Christmas Eve which means Dibber in the Wind which is another good channel is doing his Christmas Eve show Wine of Claws as we call it so Wine of Claws will be on the live stream on Dibber in the Wind see us all over there I'm going to be jumping on his live stream having a little bit of fun with him and I'm going to take it Peaky is going to probably come on as well along with a load of others and we've, we've managed to find loads and loads of new channels uh, Itchy Punk Biker yeah and Itchy Punk Biker actually looks like Keith Flint from The Prodigy we said that on the live stream but he was killing himself laughing but Itchy Punk Biker very very good so I like to share other channels as I say in the description down below is a list of all the motor vloggers Dibber in the Winds channel is in there go and watch Dibber and have a look at what he does he does a lot of stuff with the MCs and the guy is so spot on if you're thinking of joining the motorcycle club he will have all the clues if you're thinking about riding he will tell you all about riding but he's very good for the uh, information that he gives out come on Mercedes we're doing 15 mile an hour right so the GT Max all ridden all good hunky dory there's one more test ride to go this goes out in two days time so we've prepped this one really really quick which is good we did turn this one around because obviously the guy wants it for Christmas so we pulled all the stops out on our bikes I've got five going out this week but the GT Max all test ridden we are all done I am going to get a cup of coffee and uh, obviously get myself ready for the day because I've got MOTs and servicing and we've got to put an engine out of a bike and split the engine oh happy days so we are all done let's have a look at the bikes that we have in stock at the moment so sitting in there is my Harley she's in the warm under a blanket bless her she's not coming out till the summer don't want to get that dirty or rusty right let's have a butchers around the yard so that's the GT Max guys all test ridden we have an Echo there we have another Titan there and we've got an Echo there they are all going out in the next couple of days on the used bikes we've got a Suzuki Katana 550 a little old retro bike that is up for quite a good price as well so if you fancy a Christmas bargain Suzuki 550 Katana but in absolutely perfect condition Yamaha MT-03 we've got a custom BMW R65 there that one is up for sale second hand UM Commando 125 up the back BMW K1300 Tourer now that has got in off cameras front and back got the Nomo side panniers on it the extender bags grab rail to the thing so you can put a top box on it and it's got the BMW sat nav the GT is not for sale that is mine but the other one down there that XJR that is absolutely beautiful and in mint condition so if you fancy an XJR 1300 that's a few of the bikes that we've got here at Eclipse Motorcycles give us a call and you can speak to the bike sales team on 01908 643603 and uh, of course if you fancy a 50cc or a 125 from Lexmoto, WK or AJS we've got them in stock but until then be well, ride safe and from RB it's a big goodbye from me